Hey, good morning, church. Pastor Matthew here again on Wednesday morning. I decided to switch it up a little bit today, so you're in my family room. You can see my fireplace and the chair I have next to it. Uh, I want to give you a quick reminder that tonight we're going to have our um, church town hall, our virtual town hall here on Facebook Live, and that's just an opportunity for us to remain connected with each other and for us as church leadership to communicate well with you. So I hope to see many of you there at 7 p.m. tonight. We're continuing looking at the book of Ruth, and you'll remember that the book of Ruth is a book about suffering. And it's a book for anyone who's trying to reconcile the love of God with the presence of brokenness and evil in this world. It's a book about two women, a woman named Ruth and a woman named Naomi. Naomi's the mother-in-law, and Ruth is the daughter-in-law. Last week, one of the things we saw, and we saw this in the example of Ruth, is that faith commits to those who suffer even when it has nothing to gain. But what does it look like to sustain that over the long haul? It's certainly a wonderful thing to say and assent to. It's a wonderful thing to teach. Um, but it's much harder to actually do in real life, especially when the rubber meets the road. Uh, we saw a hint of this at the end of chapter 1. At uh, the very end of chapter 1 in verse uh, 22, it says, So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law returned with her. And then that phrase is repeated again. Verse 2, Ruth the Moabite. And then in verse 6 of chapter 2, the servant who was in charge of the reaper said, she is the young Moabite woman. In other words, it was easy on the one hand for Ruth to commit and say this wonderful statement in chapter 1 in verses 16 and 17 where she says, where you go I will go and where you lodge I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. But now, here's this woman who's from Moab in Israel. She's a foreigner. And she's hitting up with all the challenges that foreigners do uh, when they're in a land that's not their own. Maybe there's some language challenges. Maybe there's prejudice that's against her. And so her commitment now is, in a sense, being tested. Will she be able to remain faithful to her promise to Naomi, even as things become hard? Of course, they're without many connections. We see in verse 2 uh, that she goes to the field, the field of Boaz, and she wants to know if she'll find favor. And that's really the question here. Will uh, Ruth find favor? Will her commitments be honored? Will she be able to sustain her promise uh, over the long haul? We saw at the very beginning of Ruth, our question was, is God at work in the dark? And now we have a slightly different question. Is God at work behind the scenes? Just like we saw some, some items that were implicit in chapter 1, we see some hints, some things that are implicit here in chapter 2. They show back up, verse 1, there's a man who's of the clan of Elimelech whose name is Boaz. So there's a relative, there's someone they have access to. And then uh, it turns out, uh, that Ruth goes out in verse 3. It says, She set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the clan of Elimelech. So this is the second time in this very short section that we've heard Elimelech's name repeated twice. Remember, that was Naomi's husband and Ruth's father-in-law. And it says it just happened that she came to his field. Of course, that's an understatement. God is at work still behind the scenes caring for Ruth and Naomi. He's caring for them and providing a relative for them, and he's caring for them that it just so happens by accident, or maybe not by accident, that that's the field uh, that Ruth walks into. And then we see even more in verses 8 and 9. Well, actually, I'll, I'll go to verse 4 first. Boaz came from Bethlehem. Remember, that's the town that Ruth and Naomi were from. And Boaz shows up right at the same point. So there's the right man, she's in the right field, and he shows up at the right time. In other words, God is still at work providing for Ruth and Naomi. He is still at work behind the scenes. And even more than that, Boaz is moved to intervene in verses 8 and 9. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Boaz looks after her. And so we see as, on the one hand, Ruth exercises faith. On the other hand, God meets her there. He doesn't leave her alone 
as she commits to those who suffer in faith. But instead, he does what he always does, which, he, which is that he empowers what he commands. And so God's faithful. He's faithful here behind the scenes. He's faithful in coordinating things that just happen, or maybe not so coincidentally. And so we see that God is still active in their lives, even as they're walking day by day, doing the life of faith. It's their faith exercised in action. Right? Ruth actually had to go out to the fields, and it's also God's sovereignty meeting them there. It's both at once, that he's calling his people to obedience, and then he's also providing uh, for them. The same is true for us, right? It's easy to be initially excited about the life of faith and then realize what it means day by day. It's easy to realize on the one hand that God has never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. It's another thing to ask, what does that mean for me right now in the situation that I'm in? What does that mean right now as I'm trapped at home? What does it mean right now if I'm unsure about how things are going to play out with my health or whether I'll be infected? And what it means is this, that God is still, just like he was for Ruth, coordinating our lives. He's still at work. He's still providing for us and he's still guiding us. That's what he does for those who act in faith on his promises. I mentioned earlier that our emotions start to catch up with us at times like this. It's easy to run on adrenaline for a while. And of course, our energy starts to catch up with us. I know I'm certainly feeling that. I'm sure many of you are feeling that. And it's in moments like that that we realize we can't do this by ourselves. If it is up to me and my ingenuity and my energy that this church Uh, functions well at Cheyenne Mountain, we're in a very bad place. That would be incredibly bad news. But the good news is that it's not up to me, that we act in faith and God meets us there. He provides for us. And so my question for you would be this, where are you tempted to believe that you're all alone and that God has disappeared? Where are you tempted to wonder how much longer you can keep doing it? in the midst of those questions, remember that God is there with us as well. And he's also at work, not just in the dark, but behind the scenes. Maybe he's at work behind the scenes that you connected with someone you didn't realize you were going to connect with and they gave you the resources that you needed. Maybe he's working behind the scenes to provide uh, material goods. Whatever it is, we know that God has not forgotten us and he's not given up on us. And that as we act in faith, he'll meet us there. And of course, we know that uh, even more than Ruth and Naomi did because we know that Jesus came and he ultimately was the one who provided for us. And he didn't do it behind the scenes. And so what's true of Jesus um, becomes true of us. God is his father and God is our father as well if we have faith in him. And so he continues to work and guide and provide for us. He continues to be at work behind the scenes. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing many of you all tonight.